Hello everyone. Today I'm going to demonstrate how to configure an Easy Builder Pro project that will allow your HMI to read, write, and transfer data to two separate Modbus slave devices. Within this project, we're going to use our Modbus TCP and Modbus RTU drivers, meaning we'll also be using different communication interface for each device. The project on screen is going to allow our MT8073IE to act as our Modbus master during communication. Let's take a look at our drivers by opening the system parameters within the home tab. Notice we have configured both our Modbus RTU device driver as well as the Modbus TCP IP driver with the following communication settings. To find either of these drivers, we'll click on New Device slash Server. Now we'll click on the driver displayed in front of Device Type. This will bring us to our Device Properties menu. At the top of this menu, we'll type Modbus and then click Search. We have several Modbus drivers, but the two drivers used within this project are located here. Now we'll take a look at the objects on display. We've got several numeric objects here that belong to our Modbus TCP device. The first row on top belongs to our 3x and 1x read-only registers. Just below, we have our 4x and 0x read and write Modbus registers. Right above our Modbus RTU device registers, you'll notice our data transfer button. This data transfer button is one of our specialized objects. It is called our data transfer per page object, which you can find within the object tab under data transfer. In this example, I've used it to move data from our 4x registers on the Modbus TCP device to our Modbus RTU device. Let's view our configuration. Here, you'll notice we've specified the Modbus TCP and RTU addressing, as well as our data count of two words. Right next to this is a basic text object specifying the use of a global data transfer object for our 4x3 registers. The global data transfer object can also be found within the Object tab, and it runs on a user-defined time interval, which I have set to 0.2 seconds. The configuration for this object is as follows. Now next to this, I've set up a toggle switch that controls a macro for data transfer. The macro is very simple, Heading over to our Macro Manager by selecting our Project tab and clicking Macro, you'll see I've configured two macros. Macro 0 in this case transfers data from our Modbus TCP address to our Modbus RTU, while Macro 01 is configured in a similar way, but these addresses are flipped. Both are enabled by a specific state of our Local Bit 10 toggle switch. Now, just as an example, if our Modbus TCP device was actually an Ethernet IP device, we could use any one of these data transfer methods to enable our HMI to convert data from Modbus to Ethernet IP protocol. Since we've seen the configuration of our master project, we'll move on to our slave device projects. The first project we'll look at is our Modbus RTU. Checking our system parameters, you'll notice we have our Modbus server device configured and have specified the following COM configuration. Next, we'll look at the objects on screen. We have four objects on display. Our numeric objects are defined as our LW registers within the HMI and represent our Modbus 4x registers. 
and our bit object is defined as an LB register, which represents the 0x1 register of our RTU device. Since we don't have any special macros or data transfers within this project, we'll move on to our Modbus TCP project. Within our TCP project, you'll see we have configured our Modbus server driver. Selecting this driver will reveal our address mapping table at the bottom if Modbus TCP slash IP gateway is selected. Now this is important within our project because we aren't using an actual Modbus device. Instead, we've configured two HMIs to communicate to a master HMI via Modbus protocol. And as you'll notice, these addresses correspond to our numeric and bit objects on screen, as was in the last project. All right, now we'll watch these projects in action through VNC Viewer. Starting with our Modbus TCP project, we can see the data shown within our 3x and 4x registers on our master device. Our 3x and 1x registers are read-only but we'll go ahead and write some data to our 4x and 0x registers. And of course, we'll test our different modes of data transfer, starting with our per page object. You'll notice our data transfers from our 4x TCP registers to our 4x RTU registers. And of course, our 4x-3 registers transfer via our global data transfer object, which is one directional, like our per page object. To improve upon this, our macros, in combination with our bit trigger, will transfer data in either direction based on the specified bit state. This is a dynamic approach to data transfer. If you found this tutorial helpful and would like to see more, head on over to our YouTube channel and select the Playlist tab. Feel free to check out our website as well for free demo projects, user manuals, and more. Thank you for watching.